Hello and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. Today in this video, we are going to add a MR36 access point to our Meraki network. Previously, we have seen within our Meraki network, we have MX68CW, then we added a MS390 switch with adaptive policy enabled. We also added a catalyst switch in Meraki monitor mode, though that is offline here, that's why it's not visible. And now we are going to add an access point and that is MR36. So let's quickly learn about MR36 from the data sheet. Here you can see it's a high performance 802.11 AX indoor AP. And this is a nice compact fam form factor, which is like 10 inch in the length. Obviously, just like any other Meraki gear, it is cloud managed. And here we have some highlights. We have four radios, three radios, one for 2.4 gigahertz, 1.5 gigahertz, and one dual band radio that is 2.4 and 5 gigahertz combined. And then you have a dedicated radio for Bluetooth low energy, an integrated fourth Bluetooth radio. Then let's learn about third radio. Dedicated third radio delivers 24 cross wireless security and RF analytics. The MR36 dedicated dual band scanning and security radio continually assesses the environment, characterizing the RF interference and containing wireless threat like rogue access points, etc. So here this is you can use it for scanning and security. A dedicated third radio also means that all function occurs in real time without any impact to the client traffic or AP throughput. Integrated enterprise security and guest access. Meraki allow you to configure guest so that there is no intermixing of traffic from guest and corporate and one click guest isolation. Provide internet only access to visitors. And this is PCI compliance as well. Some radio specifications. And what are the different compliances? We it support pretty much all the technologies here. And then here you have the quick comparison of different MR36 and MR series A access points. All right, with that, um, I think uh, we can go to portal and start integrating access point. Also make a note of like a MR36 power requirement, power over ethernet is supported and that's what we are using. We are plugging in this to our MS390 and it will be using the PoE port. You can see it's a 802.AF compliant. Alternatively, it has a 12 volt DC input that I'll show you when I'll show you the physical appliance. And power consumption, the demand is 15 watt maximum, but actual power consumption based on like uh, the client density and distance. Time to show the physical appliance before we discovered this in our dashboard. Here you can see this is Cisco Meraki MR36, quite a compact form factor. If I have to flip this, you can see we have a RJ45 and a power connection. You can also use PoE to power th this AP. We have the serial number. We are going to use the serial number and discover it on Meraki dashboard just like any other device. Right now within our setup, we have SD WAN router. We have Meraki MS390 switches. We have Catalyst monitor and manage. And now it's a turn to add wireless. So we are going to discover this in Meraki dashboard and then configure our SSID, the corporate SSID and the guest SSID using radius. So let's go to Meraki dashboard now. All right, here we are. As you can see, uh, the access point is plugged in to MS390. That's why it is uh, available in Meraki dashboard. So let's go ahead and look at the switch uplink uh, or the switch port configuration. I know I have plugged in this to port number 12. 
let's see the details of board 12 here you can see i have given a friendly name mr36 ap it is connected to switch port 12 point to note we are using it as type trunk because we are expecting different type of clients to connect and they will be parked in different vlan hence the port is con con configured as trunk native vlan is one because we want ap to get an ip address for the management purposes and for that we are going to use native vlan 1 but that's not a, a hard and fast requirement you can use any other vlans as well obviously since this is a trunk all the vlans are allowed one of the things i want to show you this poe is enabled that means ap is being powered using poe from the switch port so this is as simple as this um, simple configuration for switch port now what we can do we can go to wireless within wireless click on access point and you can see we have our access point here the name is picked by mac address but you can obviously change it and give it some friendly name look at the ip address 1053.255 that's our vlan 1 so it has got an ip address from vlan 1 and i'll show you within ice where we have the nad configured for this so that we can do the radius authentication all right if you click on this you will see all the details access point like live data health health data and all those things here you can see radio settings so we have a 2.4 gigahertz radio using channel 1 20 uh, megahertz of channel uh, bandwidth 5 gigahertz using channel 104 and it is already doing channel bonding for 80 megahertz rf profile we are using a predefined rf profile basic indoor profile uh, but we can you can always have your custom profile built in here's other details in here from power perspective you can see we have 8.5 watt of power being used and this is the power standard 802.3 af all right this is all about ap health just like any meraki product you have all these things like you have performance you have connection logs tools that mean you can do a ping you can reboot the device you can blink led if someone is troubleshooting it and you are supporting remotely you can blink red um, dashboard throughput trace road arp just like any other meraki gear all right with that we are ready to configure our ssid so that clients can connect to this click on ssid here you can see we have maximum 15 ssid this page shows four of them and they all are disabled so either we can go ahead and start configuring by renaming it or we can click on edit settings and here we are going to give it a friendly name uh, you know for meraki series we are sticking to all the birds so we have bluebird which is configured for mx wireless so let's call it another bird snowbird ssid status is enabled and we want it to be broadcasted so not not a hidden one security we have ice within our uh, environment so i'm going to say enterprise not with meraki cloud but with my radius server rest of the things looks good splash page this is for mostly for guests uh, we don't want corporate employee to come and um, hit splash page first and accept eula and other things so splash page we will use when we are dealing with guest now since we have chosen radius so we have to come here and configure our radius you can see we have 100 0.10 this is our radius server for entire uh, environment and authentication port is 1812 you can test this by providing some uh, 
employee username what do you know so i have created a employee apx53 client 12 hr All right instead of begin test i accidentally hit enter let me do that again I'm going to radius you can see we have radius server configured radius accounting server configured on 1813 and we can enable radius testing support that means it will test uh, the radius reachability continually like every 10 minutes or so so we can do that but let me do the test first and then we'll go to ice and i'll show you how authorization is actually happening apx53 okay let's say begin test authentication failed while testing one of your access point not reachable but your credentials were incorrect which is fine okay so at least we know that radius server is reachable with this uh, the final thing is client ip and vlan either you can use meraki ap assign mode in nat mode but since we have our own dns and dhcp server in our environment i'm going to say external dhcp server assigned and i want to client to get an ip address in vlan 120 segment that's my employee segment with that everything is looking good let's go ahead and say save so our first ssid is configured now let me take you to ice and brief you about the authentication and authorization real quick share this tab here we are we are at ice 10.0.10 .10, and you can see if you can go to results this one you can see set vlan 120 by number and where we are doing that we are doing it here so we are sending 120 oh, upon authentication and authorization the user will be placed in vlan 120 mm -hmm. and now let me show you the policy set where we are using this authorization file and go to go to dot one x employee wireless meraki hr you can see we are saying that if my identity group is equal to dot one x employee hr it's a wireless connection start with location meraki then use this authorization profile and also allow or tag the user with a security group tag that is hr user so this is what our policy is here and uh, let me quickly show you the nad or the access point how this access point is being authorized for that we are going to go to our network devices and you can see we have one apx53 created and i think i will rename this not just switch because we are also using access point for authorization and here you can see 1053 255 slash 2 this is a switch ip but i can do 0 and slash 24 so basically anything within this slash 24 subnet that will be match so that's how we have the radius reachability now let me go to access control meraki and let's see if we have the I can see Snowbird available. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my phone and try it connecting to work. All right. Yes, I got the profile here, and I'm saying save password. No, I don't want to save password, but I do want to trust the certificate presented. I don't know if you can see. Yes, and I'm going to say trust. This is the ICE certificate. I'm trying to connect yes connected as you can see let's go and see, look at the access point 
we are interested in client here you can see we have the current client which is part of vlan 120 slash 31 you can see and it is connected to ssid snowbird at 5 megahertz frequency uh, 5 uh, gig, uh, gigahertz frequency because iphone can do that right and then you can see all kind of historical data about the clients association authentication dscb dns all kind of good information you can find from here mm -hmm. uh, another thing or the last thing i want to show you here is the access control meraki allow you to uh, configure layer 3 and layer 7 policies and restrict client bandwidth all those things let's do firewall and traffic shaping yes so now so we have the ssid configured we can use firewall and traffic shaping to do all kind of good stuff like what is the bandwidth you want to allow and what, any kind of like layer 3 and layer 7 all those things you can do a traffic shaping rule what is the per client bandwidth limit right now it's unlimited uh, per ssid bandwidth limit you can shape traffic you can have some default rule like what will be the traffic type and their tags etc and you can create your own role the one important thing is so to save some time in this video we are not creating any guest ssid but guest ssid is really simple you just name it as guest and keep it as open uh no open securities should be open and what you can do you can come here and say deny ipv4 to any local LAN. That means the guest traffic will be isolated and they will can they won't be able to talk to each other if you turn this deny as well. That's how simple it is. If you have any question, write that in comment section and I'll try my best to get back to you. Alright, this is all I wanted to show you. In next video, I'm going to show you how to connect the sensors, Meraki sense sensors. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in next video. Thank you.